to the liberal mob of America. Thomas Sowell said, racism is not dead, but it is on life support, kept alive by politicians, race hustlers, and people who get a sense of superiority by denouncing others as racists. Thomas Sowell was talking about you. You spent the last several years terrorizing law-abiding citizens under the guise of social justice. You've chanted the names of criminals and treated them like saints. And just as one chapter of your nefarious tale comes to an end, you hastily shift to the next excuse to continue your Pavlovian charade. You threaten those who protect you and shout about accountability, but you never want to hold yourselves accountable. And your friends in the media and pop culture give you the microphone. You grovel to celebrities who don't give a damn about you, all while failing to realize that many of those celebrities you adore are themselves living proof that minority oppression is a lie. You question the use of force by police, even though it was your own precious Barack Obama in 2008 who said, if they bring a knife to the fight, we bring a gun. So today I'm going to hold you accountable myself. I'm going to hold the mirror up and show you your own flaws in excruciating detail. And you're going to sit there and listen for once in your perpetually embittered lives. Today you riot over a girl who was shot and killed by the police while trying to stab another black girl. And tomorrow it'll be someone else as you frantically browse police reports to fabricate your next source of outrage. No matter how loudly you shout about racism and move the goalposts of racial unity ever backwards, you can never drown out the truth that is right in front of you. You've silenced so many white voices and denied them the opportunity to speak, all while demanding that black voices be amplified. So listen up and amplify mine. According to the Washington Post database, which has tracked every known police shooting in America since 2015, as of April 2021, over the last six years, police have shot and killed 6,211 people. 46%, or 2,883 of them were white, and 24%, or 1,496 were black. Only 6% of all 6,211 people were unarmed. And only 2% of all people shot and killed by the police over the last six years were unarmed and black. To be specific, police officers have actually killed 33 more unarmed white people than black people over the last six years. According to the most recent and complete data from the FBI, 88.6% of black Americans are killed by other black Americans, the highest percentage for any ethnic group despite the fact that black people are only roughly 13% of the population, according to the U.S. Census Bureau. That same 13% accounted for 51% of all murder and non-negligent manslaughter arrests, 53% of all robbery arrests, and 36% of all violent crime arrests. White people are 76% of the population. That 76% only accounts for 46% of all murder and non-negligent manslaughter arrests, 45% of all robbery arrests, and 59% of all violent crime arrests. In 2019, the FBI estimated that police made a total of 10,085,207 arrests. In that year, police shot and killed 999 people. That's 0.0099%. But police are targeting black people, right? According to the DEA intelligence report of 2020, Mexican transnational criminal organizations, including the Sinaloa and New Generation Jalisco cartels, are increasingly producing wholesale quantities of illicit fentanyl pills and smuggling them into the United States smuggling them right into our country over our poorest southern border, but building a wall is racist, right? The black dealer who sold drugs, including fentanyl, to George Floyd refused to testify because he might incriminate himself, but black lives matter, right? The justice system you rail against every waking moment just gave you the outcome you wanted, no, demanded, but the system is racist, right? Micaiah Bryant got into a fight with her foster sisters over cleaning the house and was shot and killed by a police officer trying to save other black people from being stabbed by her. He quite possibly saved other black lives that day. And you hate him for taking action and protecting them when their black lives were in danger. But black lives matter, right? You follow in the footsteps of uninformed basketball players and rush to social media to post virtue signaling statuses. Complaining about racism and discrimination on cell phones powered by lithium batteries made with cobalt mined by African children as young as seven years old in the most deplorable and dangerous conditions. But black lives matter, right? No, you care about George Floyd in Minneapolis, Micaiah Bryant in Columbus, and Sean Reed in Indianapolis and only a handful of other names. You all showed up for them. But if Black Lives Matter so much to you, where were you on April 19th when 13-year-old Janiah Pate fatally stabbed 13-year-old Nyara Gibbons in Cincinnati? If Black Lives Matter so much to you, where were you on April 18th when seven-year-old Jocelyn Adams was shot and killed in a gang-related shooting while sitting in the McDonald's drive through with her father in Chicago? If Black Lives Matter so much to you, where were you on April 17th when eight-year-old J. Love Smith was beaten to death in Fresno, California by his two black legal guardians? If Black Lives Matter so much to you, where were you on April 6th when, also in Chicago, 22-month-old Caden Swan was shot in the head by 25-year-old DeAndre Binion? April 14th, 2021, Brian Henderson Jr., 12 years old, shot and killed in the car he was riding in in Leavenworth, Kansas. April 14th, 2021, Dexter Ferguson, 7 years old, 
shot and killed in his bed when someone shot into his apartment in Palm Beach Gardens, Florida. April 12th, 2021, Jamela Marlowe, three years old, shot and killed in a parking lot in Nashville, Tennessee. April 11th, 2021, Dior Harris, 11 months old, shot and killed when someone shot into the car she was riding in in Syracuse, New York. April 10th, 2021, Rondell Jones, three years old, shot and killed when someone shot into the car he was riding in in Hartford, Connecticut. March 26, 2021, Harley Sealance, 11 years old, shot and killed while riding his scooter in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. March 22nd, 2021, Tracy Bryant, eight years old, shot and killed when someone shot into the car she was riding in in Huma, Louisiana. March 13th, 2021, Jalea Hughes, 10 years old, shot and killed when someone opened fire in a public park in Little Rock, Arkansas. March 7th, 2021, Kayon Green, nine years old, shot and killed when someone shot into the car he was riding in in St. Louis, Missouri. March 1st, 2021, Neandria Dyer, 11 years old, shot and killed while caught in the crossfire between two gunmen at a gas station in Chicago, Illinois. February 13th, 2021, Davion Tarver, four years old, shot and killed in his bed when someone shot into his apartment in Tuskegee, Alabama. February 4th, 2021, Major Turner, two years old, shot and killed when someone shot into his apartment in Birmingham, Alabama. February 2nd, 2021, Lorea Hall, nine years old, shot and killed in a drive-by shooting in Louisville, Kentucky. January 24th, 2021, Demaya Rankin Fleming, seven years old, shot and killed while sitting in a car with her dad in St. Louis, Missouri. And January 6, 2021, Cassidy Saunders, six years old, shot and killed in a drive-by shooting at a birthday party in Miami, Florida. Where were you for any of them? I know exactly where you were, rioting, looting, and terrorizing the world while chanting the same few names you've been programmed to care about, and doing it all with the blessing of Maxine Waters and her leftist cohorts. Most recently, over a man who posed as a water company employee to rob a pregnant woman and put a gun to her belly in 2007 in Houston, Texas. Yeah, that George Floyd. Criminals who get shot by the police do not deserve to be idolized or regarded as kings and queens by the general public. But you and the liberal mob keep whipping black people into a frenzy, using them as expendable human shields behind whom to advance your agenda. Because deep down, that's all you think we're good for anyway. Black people by far are the ones who've been most brainwashed by your ideology over the last 40 years. You don't see any other racial group rioting and looting when one of their own is shot and or killed, either by the police or by a person of another ethnicity. Oh, you don't think it happens? Tell that to the white family of Texas State Trooper Chad Walker. On March 26, 2021, he responded to a motorist assist call outside of Mejia, Texas and was immediately shot several times by D. Arthur Pinson, the black man in the disabled vehicle. Chad Walker died from his injury several days later after donating his organs so he could help people even in death. Chad is survived by his wife, a 15-year-old son, twin seven-year-old daughters, and a two-month-old daughter. How many white people rioted and looted in response to his death? Zero. Tell it to the white family of one-year-old Aaron DeHart in El Paso, Texas. On April 13th, 2021, Aaron accidentally ripped a pillow, at which point the babysitter, 24-year-old black man Marvin Lake, flew into a rage and used wrestling-style moves on the baby, which resulted in a hemorrhaged lung, brain damage, a fractured skull, and ultimately death. How many white people rioted and looted in response to Aaron's death? Zero. Tell it to the white family of Dr. Robert Leslie. On April 7th, 2021, in Rock Hill, South Carolina, former NFL player Philip Adams, a black man, entered Dr. Leslie's home and shot him, his wife Barbara, their two grandchildren, and a worker at the home named James Lewis. How many white people rioted and looted in response to their deaths? Zero. And tell it to the white family of 32-year-old Tony Tempa in Dallas, Texas, an actual victim of police brutality. On August 10th, 2016, Tony called the 911 operator and told her he was having a lot of anxiety and that he suffered from a severe mental illness. When the officers arrived, Tony was cuffed, flipped on his stomach, and two officers kneeled on his neck for 13 minutes. Tony died as a result, and the officers went on to joke about his mental illness as he lay dead on the ground at their feet. And how many white people rioted and looted in response to his death? Again, zero. The actions of police officers matter, but your reaction matters too. In all the incidents I just mentioned, if the races had been reversed, the entire world would be on fire right now, and you know it. But you ignore these real tragedies and these real instances of police brutality because you're waiting to be told whose life matters more by your mainstream media overlords. Because to them, and evidently to you, black criminals shot by the police are more important and more valuable. And honestly, you're right, but not in the way you would think. George Floyd and many other black miscreants are worth more to you dead than they ever could have been alive because it is only their deaths on which you can build your new regime of domestic terror. Nancy Pelosi thanked George Floyd for his sacrifice, as if he knew he would become a martyr for taking illicit drugs and trying to use counterfeit money in Minneapolis last year. You demand accountability for the police and white people for every action, 
but you never hold the actual perpetrators of the crime themselves accountable. Instead, you and the liberal mob make excuses for the actions of criminals, conveniently ignoring the fact that it was their own poor choices that led to their involvement with police in the first place. Being black does not give you a free pass to do whatever you want and break whatever laws you please without consequence. You worship Democrat politicians who keep minorities in a state of perpetual disadvantage so that they can sick them like attack dogs on anyone who dares to disagree with your false narrative. While pretending to move race relations forward, you've actually set them back by decades. You talk about dismantling white supremacy without realizing your actions are quite literally creating a whole new generation of white people who might be tempted to look upon black people with scorn and contempt because of the way you have trained black people to act. You have conditioned black people to act like subhuman creatures at the slightest provocation. You are the slave masters of the 21st century, and you hunt those of us who escape from your control and flog us with your racist invective. But the lashes don't sting for us anymore because we're free in body and in mind. And that's what enrages you most of all. And so you continue, growing ever more unhinged, feverish, and nonsensical. Going so far as to now say that knife fights are a part of black culture. Well, you know what else is a part of black culture? Selling our own people into slavery. But you wouldn't know anything about that because the only history you know comes from the 1619 Project. Some white people in the past did sell black people into slavery. And now you sell us metaphorically into ideological chains after auctioning us off to the highest bidder at the mainstream media auction block. You haven't changed a bit. You say you want to defund or abolish the police. But what good will come from defunding the police if your viciousness towards them has made them so pusillanimous that they won't even do the job anymore? More funding means more training. More training means better practices. Better practices means better outcomes, which is what you claim to want in the first place. But you'd rather defund the police altogether. Police like the officer who was shot at Point Blake Range in California and was still able to call for help and apply a tourniquet to her wounded colleague. All because you take your orders from an athlete who had to be carried off of the court during an NBA Finals game because of a leg cramp crying all the way. The fact of the matter is, if real justice is what you truly desire, then it must be blind and impartial. If you have to terrorize the entire country for a year, throw pig's blood on the homes of your adversaries, threaten to incite a riot if you don't get the outcome you want, and rapidly harass anyone who disagrees with your presumptive conclusions for the rest of their lives, that's not justice. That's mob rule. Lady Justice is blindfolded because color shouldn't tip her scales. The consequences of crime should be colorblind. And the scales of justice can never be truly balanced if you weight one side with hatred and intimidation. The more you cry wolf, the less seriously you will be taken in the future. Because you have become the wolves yourselves. You don't even try to put on sheep's clothing anymore. You want us to see your teeth. And trust me, we see them. But lions are stronger than wolves. And we can show some teeth ourselves. So if you want some, come and get some. Consider this a courtesy warning. Because when you come for one of us, you come for all of us. And just remember, if you defund the police, there will be no one left to protect you from the rest of us. Lives matter. Actions matter too. And if you have to put a color in front of either of those statements, the only racist is you. I'm Nemani Felder, and that was absolutely nothing but common sense.